Next, the latest science revealing the hidden reason your jeans feel too tight and your belly feels full. The three questions you need to ask your doctor. Can you tell me what signs and symptoms I should watch for? To prevent your bloat. Next. And according to the latest research, there are surprising new reasons behind why you're having trouble getting your genes to button up. It all lies in the microbiome in your gut. Take a look. Your microbial cells, all the tiny organisms like bacteria living inside you, outnumber your body's own cells 10 to 1, making you, in some ways, more microbe than human. But all those microorganisms have a job. Your body operates like a factory, and your microbes are the worker bees, helping digest food, maintaining your gut lining, even telling your immune system who's friend or foe. But some of those microbes can be destructive, creating bloat-causing hydrogen and methane gases. That's why when your gut is out of balance, with more bad microbes than good, you feel puffy, gassy, like you can't button up your jeans. So how can you eliminate this kind of bloat? Dr. Robin Chucky, founder of the Digestive Center for Women, is here, and she spent the last few years poring over the latest gut health research to find out exactly how to do that. Now, she says that in her practice, she's seeing a lot of things firsthand, very different perspectives on this. A lot of women have issues with their gut that never used to talk about before. Why is that? So bloating is the number one complaint I'm seeing in my office. It's happening more and more for the simple reason that we're too clean. Too clean? Too clean. So we, in what ways are we too clean? Well, we're using all these but antibacterial you look, products. You look pretty clean. Well, I did bathe just for you today, but <laughs> normally, you know, we want to keep it a little dirty. So we're using all these antibacterial products that are killing off all our good bacteria. And as it turns out, good bacteria, most of our bacteria, in fact, are our friends, not our foes. They're designed to keep us healthy, to train our immune system. So eliminating them with all these antibacterial products we're using is really creating tons of problems for us in terms of bloating and other health problems. So you brought a high-tech demo to, to I build did. us alive for us. So this is what? This is us? This, well, this is what the hand sanitizer is going to do. So antibacterial products like hand sanitizer, which you see everybody walking around with in the airport and schools, hand sanitizer can't distinguish between good and bad bacteria. They kill them equally. So here they are eradicating. So, so, so the blues are bad. The blue, yeah, the we'll make the blue the boys bad and the boys pink bad. for the girls are good. Okay. So here they are. They're killing off. <laughs> I get one up all the time. They're killing off all are healthy bacteria, and you know, as luck would have it, the healthy bacteria are often frailer and easier to be killed off mm -hmm. than the bad bacteria. So what happens now is we have this whole deficit in our microbiome. We have all here, get your hands in here, get some of this. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so we're, we have this whole deficit, and now the bad bacteria multiply, there they are multiplying, yes. Yes and create all this bloat-producing gas. And so we end up with this imbalance in our microbiome. So these products have no advantage over regular hand, just hand washing with soap and water for keeping us healthy. All right, so I wanted to find out what else besides hand sanitizers were concerned. What, but the, the hygiene hypothesis is a big one, but the things we do right now. So I wanted to find out if there are things that could be hiding in your home right now without you realizing it that could be causing you an issue. So let's go meet Kamika. How are you, Kamika? Hi, how are you, Becca? And thank you for letting Dr. Chuck Ding go Hi. through your... so nice to meet you. Help me out. Yeah, thank you for letting you go through your stuff. Uh, I want to hear your story first. What's the issues with bloat with you? Okay, so it's so embarrassing. Like, I can't wear a proper outfit without having that issue where either my jeans don't fit right or I'm wearing a dress and I have to wear Spanx, you know, just to make sure it looks smooth and I don't look like I'm three months pregnant. Nothing against pregnant <laughs> ladies, but I don't want to look pregnant if I'm not. So so those are some of the issues that I'm having and it's not just food related. I think sometimes when I don't get enough rest, I can just wake up and I feel so extended. So I really need your help, please. So uh, if you're willing to let us do this yes. right now, that Dr. Chutkin is going to take you through things she found in your life that could be causing oh. you problems. Don't judge. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And you're not alone. The things that you have in your medicine cabinet, in your kitchen, they're very similar to what we've all got in our houses. Exactly. Fair enough? Absolutely. Take it away. 
So we're going to start off in the medicine cabinet, which ironically, although you take lots of things to avoid bloating, you're probably taking things that make it a lot worse too. So Kamika, you, like a lot of people, probably think that the medicine cabinet is a solution to a lot of your problems. But when it comes to bloating in the microbiome, it's often the cause. So I want to start with this right here, oh. antibiotic, yeah. antibiotic. So the typical American kid will receive 17 courses of antibiotics by the time they get to high school. Wow. It's a tremendous amount of antibiotics. And keep in mind that five days of a strong, what we call broad spectrum antibiotic that okay. works against a lot of different bacteria will kill off a third of your gut bacteria. Oh, Is that That's right, one third? One third, <laughs> and there's no guarantee that they're ever coming back. So we talked about what happens when you have this void, right. when a lot of the bacteria killed off and a lot of the good bacteria, the bad bacteria go forth and multiply. So there's some really important questions to ask. My top three are number one, this okay. is the most important question, is this antibiotic absolutely necessary? Okay. It's just the first question. Because studies have shown, particularly in kids, that 67% of the time doctors will prescribe an antibiotic if they think you want one, and 7% when they think you don't. So there's wow. a lot of leeway between when you really need it. The second question is, you have to ask, are you giving me this antibiotic for an actual infection, or are you giving me it just in case? Okay. Can we can't unlearn oh. this for one second? This is not a blame <laughs> issue, it's just the reality. You come to my office and right. you say, I got a sore throat, can you give me some antibiotics? It's a very different way of coming to me than saying, I got this thing in my throat, I really don't want to take antibiotics. Right. What do you think? It biases me. I didn't realize those numbers were true, but two-thirds of the time, I'm going to give you antibiotics. Right. The exact same scenario versus less than one in ten. Well, I'm learning a lot because, of course, you just go in and you have someone think for you. So now I'm learning it's a partnership. Like, yeah. I have to work Absolutely. with you and tell you dialogue. exactly. It's a wrong. dialogue. And if you come in saying, you know, I'd rather not take an antibiotic unless absolutely necessary, then they're going to be more cautious about prescribing it. And that's a good thing good. for your microbiome. The third question is just to ask, could I take the prescription home with me? And can you tell me what signs and symptoms I should watch for? That would mean I need to, stay, to start taking the antibiotic. So okay. that's sort of Watch so you for don't waiting. Have to take it right away. Absolutely, you can wait and see what happens. Let's move on to the next area. Okay. We also found something in your fridge that we're uh. worried about, and <laughs> this is something that a lot of folks take. They think it's okay for them, but they it's have. So good. Uh, these are artificially sweetened drinks and snacks. I know why you're taking them. I get that. What's the problem with them? Kamika, when it comes to sweeteners pick calories over chemicals. These oh, chemicals are wow. terrible for us. Artificial sweeteners are called artificial for a reason. So let me explain to you how they can be contributing to your bloat. Okay. Artificial sweeteners are not broken down in the small intestine. That's why they don't add calories. So they float on down to the colon where they get fermented by gut bacteria. And what do they produce? The fermentation? Hydrogen, methane, gas, and bloat. So pick calories over chemicals. You don't want to be putting these chemicals in your body. Can I keep these two and go light on them? Go regular yogurt. <laughs> go regular. I, I, I wish they worked. That's actually part that's frustrating. They're, oh. they're, they're irritating because they actually don't really offer you with the benefits exactly. they desire, but they cause a bloating many of you don't expect. Oh. Thank you very much Thank for sharing you. your life with us. Thank you so much. Dr. Chesley's got a brand new book out. It's called The Microbiome Solution, which is absolutely fabulous. We'll be right back. But first...